Hi everyone, my name is Tao Yeager, GitLab Product Manager. And today I wanna to talk about helping you get set up to make API calls. Sometimes, uh, well, recently I demoed this feature to restrict who can override variables. And this feature, like a few of our features, you can only make the change through an API to enable the project setting. The UI does not exist yet. And so if you've never made an API call, um, today, I want to help you um, download an application for free that'll let you, that'll facilitate making and receiving responses from an API call, and also how to generate a personal access token so that you can um, send an authorization on the call to get more information than you would that's publicly available, and also how to use GitLab docs to properly configure your request uh, URLs. So the first thing you need is an application for making the calls. Uh, I suggest using postman.com. It's very easy to use and you can download the application for free. If you want to use the web application from the homepage, you would just click on launch Postman and it opens up the web interface uh, or you can from the homepage of postman.com, scroll to the very bottom under Get Postman, you can download the app. I downloaded the app, so I'll be demoing it from uh, the desktop application. So let me go launch it now. Postman. All right, when Postman, when the application opens, it usually has an overview tab um, of your workspace if you created one. You really don't need to fill that out for the purpose of making a few API calls. You can just open another tab. Let me close this panel. All right, so now we're in a view in Postman when we can start um, sending and receiving, sending uh, API calls and receiving the response. The response is gonna be in this bottom panel here. What do you enter for a request URL? This is where you can go to our GitLab docs and in the left navigation, click on API. And the docs will, and you can click in the right table contents to basic usage. And the docs will explain to you what has to be prefixed to the API request. Um, it'll give you an example. And for the first example here for a valid API request, you can copy this example. I'm gonna copy it and make one change. It tells you the example here that this is if you have the GitLab instant that's called gitlab.example.com. But in this case, when I paste this in, I'm going to remove dot example because for my demonstration, I'm gonna use a project that actually lives in uh, gitlab.com. So now we have the beginnings of an API call, but uh, what do we really want to do for a test? I would like to, uh, and at the end, um, and by the way, the documentation will explain to you that the anatomy of a call is the domain is here, slash the API, slash the version of the API you want to use, in which case um, here we have version four, which is the latest version that GitLab supports. I think we also support version three. And then slash project, this is calling out the resource. And a resource is uh, something we have a lot of in our documentation as far as what we support. If you, in the left navigation, if you expand resources, you can see, uh, scroll through them. There's a lot of resources that GitLab API supports. I'm gonna go to project for this example. I'm going to demo uh, being able to change this project setting. Okay, so in project APIs, in the right table contents, you can see you can list user projects, you can create a project, you can edit a project. We're gonna do first a very simple get a single project. When you click to, to the documentation on get a single project, it'll tell you uh, the general format of the request URL and the method you have to use. Um, for getting a project, which is uh, the get method is just retrieving information. So back in Postman, 
You can see there's a lot of different methods you can use. We'll select get, which is usually the default. And then it tells you here in the docs that after the slash project, we you need to do a slash ID, meaning the ID of the project you want to retrieve. And uh, so to get the ID of the project you want to retrieve, I have a test project here. Uh, when you are looking at the project repository under project overview, you can see that the project ID is listed below the project name. I'm going to copy this project ID and paste it into my URL in Postman. And so I think this is all I need based on our documentation to go get a single project uh, by this project ID. I'm going to click send. You'll see below in the request uh, response area, this is the body. These are various tabs of what the response will uh, return. In the body uh, for this project, it's giving me 29 lines, um, 27 lines of data, but 29 lines. Oh, and then if you've ever heard of API request status code, um, in Postman, it displays it here, 200 means successful or okay. So I know that nothing failed, it returned what it's supposed to, but I expect more than 29 lines of data for a project. The reason I'm getting so little is it's just returning what's publicly available. I have not passed through a token that says I'm authorized to get more than the uh, public information. So I know that as the project owner for this project, I can pass through my project owner token to get more information. So in the authorization tab in Postman, I suggest selecting bearer token. That's the one that I'm familiar with. And um, so then it gives you this uh, field to the right of the token that you could populate there. So how do you generate a token to use in your API call? Well, in your uh, user settings, in the left navigation, you can go to click on access token and it'll take you to this view. And I am going to create a test token. You can set the expiration if you wish. If you don't, it will not expire uh, uh, and you just have to manually revoke it. I'll just set the 30th, for example. Then you have to select a scope. If you forget to select a scope and you click at the bottom to create personal access token, it'll remind you to select a scope. Uh, when you get an error message, by the way, it does clear out your expiration date. So you'll have to re-enter it. It left the name that I want. And I'm gonna choose the uh, just one scope, the API scope, because that's what I'm testing. And I try to limit the scopes I put in the token to only what I need. And then I'm gonna click create personal access token. It'll confirm that one was created and it's right here. You'll, uh, and it'll tell you to save it because you won't be able to access it again. So I'm gonna click copy personal access token. It confirmed that it's copied uh, and it's ending in MXMX. In Postman, I'm just gonna paste it and it's the same ending. So I know it's the one that I want. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice is um, if you leave the page or you refresh it, it really does go away where you can't see it anymore. But um, at the bottom, you'll see that this new access token that I created uh, with the name of test token um, has not been used yet, will expire in two days, uh, and the only scope it has is API. And then this revoke bu button is important where when you're done with the token, you can just revoke it so that there's no uh, risk that it could be used by someone else. All right, so now I have a token. And um, one thing I wanna point out with the request uh, re response body is sometimes when you send another request, it happens so fast that you don't know if it returned it. But if you scroll somewhere to the middle of the bottom, when a new response is given to you, it'll bring you back to the top to line one. So. This time I'm expecting with the owner of the project token, I should get more information. I'll click send. So it brought me back up to the top 
I could see line one, it was using my token. And now you can see there's a lot more information that I have access to about the project, not just the initial 29 lines. So going back to this uh, feature that has this one project setting, I happen to know that this project setting is in row 90 right here. And the current value is set to true. You can also um, look up the, uh, the possible attributes of a project by going to, in the documentation, going to edit project. And it'll show you in the table here for all the attributes and, and, and description and the type of value that is accepted for that attribute. In this case, if I copied this, and go back to the docs, I should be able to find it right there in the table. Okay, so let's go edit this project. Um, so we did a get to retrieve project info and now we wanna change this value. So for the edit project API call, the method is a put back here in Postman, I'm gonna change get to put and the rest of it is similar slash project slash ID, um, slash project slash ID here. So you're gonna go to the tab for parameter. And what you can enter here is the attribute. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Oh, one thing I want you to note, as I paste it here, you'll see it'll be dynamically added to the request URL. There, you'll notice that that question mark will be removed and everything to the right of it if I uncheck the query parameter. And I'll check it again. And then as I type in the value I wanna change it to, which is false, you'll see it also is dynamically added up here. All right, so I'm gonna do a put call to this request URL to this project ID so that I can change this attribute to the value of false. Um, we'll come back and check line 90 to see if it's changing to false. Send, the status is okay. I'm brought back to the top. So I know this is a new body and scrolling to row 90. There it is, it's been changed to false as I submitted. Um, and then one thing I'm gonna revoke this uh, token that I just created and I scroll down to confirm that active um, personal tokens are zero. This user has no access to uh, a personal access token. Another thing you can do if you're concerned about the security of your token is you can in Postman go to cookies and delete um, everything related to the gitlab.com domain. And you can also clear out this field and, when, and, and close the tab. And when you close the tab, you get the option of not saving anything that you had been doing on that tab, um, not saving the, the request URL or any token that was saved. So now when I open a new tab and I go to authorization, you can see that there's nothing populated for a bearer token, but I'd already revoked the token. So would, wouldn't have been useful to anyone anyways. Well, I hope that was helpful for you to get a um, quick overview of an application um, in Postman that you can use to make API calls and that the we have very um, detailed documentation of the types of calls you can make and the type of resources that um, you can be updating. Um, hope that was helpful. Thanks for listening.